wasn't invited. Uh, you know, look, I'm not going to sit up there and let the president use me as a photo op. That's all that thing was. It was Kabuki Theater. Would you have gone uh, at that? Oh, you're darn right I would have. But, you know, I wouldn't have just sat there smiling into the camera. I mean, it's not every day that you get to have FaceTime with the President of the United States. And I would have asked him some very pointed questions, like why he said the police acted stupidly, uh, the Cambridge Police Department, in the case of uh, Dr. Harold Gates, who wouldn't cooperate in an entry in progress. I'd also ask the President, very politely, by, I might add, why he nominated Davo Adegbele to head the Civil Rights Division of the U.S. DOJ. Adegbele tried to make a folk hero out of a cop killer, Abu Jamal, and he wasn't even representing him, by the way. And, and I, I, you know, every law enforcement fraternity organization in America opposed that nomination, but he put it forth anyway, and thankfully the Senate rejected him. I'd also say, Mr. President, why in, in the Obama economy can't black people in our American ghettos find meaningful work? They haven't been able to escape poverty, and they have to send their kids to failing schools. Mr. President, why do you oppose the voucher program that uh, gives struggling parents in these high crime areas a chance to end generational poverty. Those are the things that give rise to a lot of the violence that we see in the American ghetto, and that's why they're asking those questions. I wouldn't sit up there and lobby him a hanging curveball that he could swat out of the park. Barack Obama has not been a friend of the American police officer. Okay, so it could be problematic if you had been a guest uh, today. Um, but, Cheryl, well, you, know, you, know, you, know, you mentioned one thing that's very interesting you said about uh, addressing the jobs issue, lack of economic you know, incentives for, for young uh, African Americans. And it got me thinking because it was the State Department spokesperson who said not too long ago that it was that same lack of, 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 of economic opportunities, just paraphrasing here, that created terrorists. So they're very comfortable talking about that, but then taking incidents like this and essentially blaming it on law enforcement. What do you make of that? <laughs> well, I, you know what I make of it. First of all, uh, you know, Eric Holder said we're cowards when it comes to discussions about race. Well, I'm not a coward, and that's why I'd ask those questions, but uh, more specifically to what you said, anyone that would equate a terror organization to uh, struggling people in American ghettos is, is way off base. So, you know, some of the things that might work in, uh, like, uh, education for struggling parents who are trying to end generational poverty, that's not going to work with terrorism. That, what, I, what I heard the other day about finding terrorist jobs and that that would uh, turn their lives around and, and make them see the light, I mean, that's ridiculous. But what so they said, but, but implicit in that comment, if you think about it, Chair, was this notion that that's not the same force at play in communities like Ferguson or what happened in New York with the chokehold garner, et cetera, that that is really a police overkill. Uh, I didn't mean to play on the words crassly there, but that that's police going too far. That's not an economic matter. That's guys like you going too far. You know, sure, that's the, that's the American police officer being thrown under the bus. Look, we're the low-hanging fruit because we can't fight back against powerful people like Eric Holder and uh, Mayor de Blasio and, and the President of the United States who have a very big stage with which to get a message across. So, you know, that's why I stepped up uh, to defend the American police officer. Look, there's nothing wrong with uh, the American police officer or American policing. We do not need to be transformed like the president suggests. The American police officer, and as an institution and a profession, is one of the few things left that's right about America. So I'm going to continue to resist this, this notion, this false notion, uh, Neil, that uh, um, police officers, even white police officers, use an inordinate amount of force on uh, young black males. The data's not there, the research doesn't suggest it. It's a false narrative and it needs to be slapped down. So when you see on award shows, Sheriff, or, or our Oscar shows, and uh, you know, the, the hands up thing, don't shoot, uh, I don't want to be so simplistic as to make this a, a racial comment out of you. Uh, but as a prominent African American Sheriff, how do you feel about that and knowing how young African American, particularly males, are going to respond to that? Well, first of all, I'm disturbed by that message, that false message. Uh, look, we need to be honest with people. We need to be honest that I'm, I'm a role model in the Milwaukee County area, and I embrace that. Uh, you know, I embrace values and virtues, and I, I stress these things with the young uh, people that I talk to all across Milwaukee County, 
not just in the black community, but countywide. And I talk about the virtues of things like hard work, embracing education, personal responsibility, lifestyle choices are very important. Too many of our young black males are making some very flawed lifestyle choices, like dropping out of school, drug and alcohol abuse, gang involvement, and it's having a detrimental effect on their future. So the best thing to do for people in, in my position as, a, as an African-American male and the President of the United States and Eric Holder is to bring a, uh, some reasonableness to this discussion, stay away from the race baiting, stay away from the race hustling, stop stoking racial discord and putting this poison into the minds of our young black men because that's what this is. Sure, very good seeing you again. You know what's going on Sam? I never know quite no, where you stand. You. Never know where you stand. Seriously, Sheriff, thank you very, very much. You're very welcome, Dan. Yeah. All right, well, Keystone, the president handing down his first veto in the GOP control of Congress. I want you to meet the Democrat. This is not too big a fan of what he just thought of that. Oh, come on. <laughs> 